Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome again to our midweek service tonight. Uh, together, we are all excited. Are you excited tonight to hear the word of God about the life of Ezekiel? And before we start our uh, midweek service tonight, uh, we start to uh, pray and then we're going to sing for our song tonight about safe for everyone. Okay, let's pray. Uh, let's bow down our head and let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, tonight, O Lord God, uh, we want to thank you so much, O Lord God, for another gathering of uh, worshiping to you, O Lord God, and hearing about your word tonight, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for your goodness and for your mercy always that you've given to us, O Lord God. Thank you, O Lord God, because again tonight, O Lord God, uh, we hear your word, Father God. Lord, we continue pray, O Lord God, uh, for your anointing, O Lord God, for the word tonight, Father God. To Pastor Manny, O Lord God, use him, O Lord God, to your word, Father God. And may your word, O Lord God, give you give an understanding, O Lord God, to your word, O Lord God, to each of us, Father God. Our brothers and sisters, our uh, in their house, O Lord God, Lord, bless them, Father God. As uh, we, we hear, O Lord God, your word tonight, Father God. And tonight, Lord God, we want to lift to you, O Lord God, our praise, our worship to you, O Lord God, through singing together, O Lord God. We want to thank you and we want to honor you, O Lord God. And all praises, glory, and honor is only to you, O Lord Jesus. This is we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing and worship to the Lord Jesus. Safely undone. 
resting place is in your name. I found my fortress in you, and my soul is anchored with you. My resting place is in your Lord God, to my Father God, truly, O Lord God, our life, O Lord God, forever safe with you, Father God. Lord, we want to lift your name on high, O Lord God, because you are the God of hosts, Father God. You are the God of, you are the God, you are the King of kings, O Lord, and you are the Lord of Lord, O Lord God. And tonight, O Lord God, we want to lift, O Lord God, our, uh, we are uh, tonight, uh, worship to you, O Lord God, our, Midweek, uh, reading, uh, hearing your word tonight, Father God. Lord, we continue, Lord God, ask that your Holy Spirit upon us, Lord God, and give a wisdom, oh Lord God, tonight, Father God. Each of us, Father God, our brothers and sisters in their home, Father God, bless, oh Lord God, each of us, Father God, while listening, oh Lord God, your word, Father God. We lift your name on high, Father God. You are worthy to be praised, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And we bring back the highest praise and glory to your holy name, O Lord Jesus. This is what we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our um, midweek service. You know, I really hope that everybody is doing so well. You know, it would be nice if I say it's good to see you all, you know, but I don't see you all. You know, I'm just right here in front of my... Uh, computer right now but um you know if you are watching online right now uh sabihin niyo naman praise the lord you know just uh, glory to god you know uh, and say amen that then i know that you are right there watching and you are right there uh uh attending this midweek service online you know para malaman natin at uh, you are present ano so Welcome sa ating midweek service and of course we are continuing on our series in the study of the book of Ezekiel you know? for the past uh, it, oh, it's more than two months now that we are going through this uh, book of Ezekiel and tonight we will be looking at uh, chapter 12 and uh, hopefully you know we can go to chapter 13 also at the same time uh, uh, if the time permits you know? so let us just refresh dun sa ating pinag-aralan last week ano that the Shekinah glory of the Lord departed from the temple from from the from the temple in Israel ano talagang yung yung glory ng Lord were in that temple in that temple that's where the glory of the Lord lives that's where the presence of the Lord uh, uh reside and because of the rebellion of the people because of the people worshiping other god in people of Judah no so the Lord decided to depart from that uh, uh temple you know the the, the Shekinah glory ikabad from the temple and we don't want that to happen in in the spiritual temple you know we are the temple of the holy spirit that the the the, the lord the, the the spirit of the lord dwells within us and we don't want that glory of the lord ikabad from us you know? so we we learn from our study you know sa pag-aaral natin sa book of Ezekiel that um See Ezekiel, he does not just deliver the message, but he himself is the message, you know? Because the Lord have made him do this symbolic act na ipoportray niya yung isang message na siya mismo yung pinaka-portrayal ng message. So he's not just a, a messenger that the deliverer of the message, but he himself is the message himself, you know? And um see si Ezekiel um and in this pag-aaral natin dito sa 
uh, book of Ezekiel chapter 12 and uh, chapter 13, he will be dealing with uh, the people of Israel to be exiled. May exile sila and then it will be another prophecy that the Lord will give to the people of Israel and also there will be a judgment that will happen. Itong book of Ezekiel, it's a lot of judgment that this happening you know and there will be also uh, a, a judgment and there is also confrontation to the false prophets and because when they were exiled to uh, babylon from uh, judah no from jerusalem merong mga false prophet na kasama doon sa exile and these false prophets are saying different things sinasabi nila yung mga kung anong gustong marinig ng mga tao sometimes you know even even the preacher themselves you know we are vulnerable to this you know we just share we just preach on what the people wants to hear and it's not what the people needs to hear you know so the lord will be dealing with this uh, false prophets na they are saying Thing. Sabi nila, oh, this is what the Lord says. Ito yung sinasabi ng Lord. And but the Lord is saying, hindi ko yan sinabi. Kaya sometimes, you know, we have to be aware. Kapag sinasabi natin, uy, pinapasabi sa akin ni Lord. Ano? We have to be aware of that. Ano? Kasi the Lord, kahit sa akin, ano, I, the Lord doesn't speak with me. At talagang naririnig ko na. Ano? So, para, sabi ko, paano nila nangyayari yun? Para, para, probably, that's, that's why when when i'm telling you guys that, that there, there's a message that the lord wants to bring i always say the lord have impressed to my heart this message it's not that the lord told me this audibly because the lord doesn't talk to me audibly you know but the lord impressed into my heart it just like he, he made me feel it that the lord really wants to rebuild his word to the people you know and also not just to the people but to myself also so Uh, Ezekiel, dito sa chapter 12, we will see that Ezekiel will play another part, another symbolic act. Ano? Just like the last time, meron siyang mga symbolic act uh, na pinagawa ang Lord, yung lying down on the left side eh, for a certain period of days and on the right side, ano? yung shaving of hair, you know, mga ganon. Ngayon, there is another symbolic act that the Lord wants to have him portray another one. And titignan natin ay yung another uh, symbolic act na ipapagawa wherein re, re, he were re-enacting, i-re-re-enact niya yung exile na mangyayari dun sa people of Israel. And not just the people of Israel, but also the re- leadership of the people of Israel wherein the entire Judah will be destroyed. Wherein the leadership of the the the, the king of Judah you know they will be uh, devastated you know? so he will de- dramatize he de- dramatize niya dito yung fate of Israel ang mangyayari sa Israel dun sa mga inhabitants dito sa Jerusalem ano and not just that even the king yung kanilang hari which is Zedekiah di ba napag-aralan natin si Zedekiah before in one of our bible characters if you will remember ano Zedekiah talagang he is one of the wicked wicked kings of Judah wherein very horrible ang nangyari sa kanya at the end at yung nangyari sa kanyang mga anak and nakita natin na ang nangyari kay Zedekiah actually nahuli siya na capture siya ng Babylon under uh, Nebuchadnezzar and then nung nahuli siya itinali siya pagkatapos yung kanyang mga anak sa harap niya mismo pinatay yung kanyang mga anak wherein the, the the children his son supposed to be the next king of Judah pero ang sabi sa kanya ni Nebuchadnezzar this is the very last thing that you will see pinatay ang kanyang mga anak doon sa kanyang mismong harapan how devastating that one to a father ano and then pagkatapos nung binulag yung kanyang mga mata Binulag ang kanyang mga bata because I want you to see this is the last moment that you will see before you lose your eyesight. Ganon ang nangyari dun sa wicked na king ito. No? Sa, sa wickedness because this king after so many uh, times that the prophets have told him that he will bring the, the nation back into worship the Lord but instead he led the people into uh, worshiping idols. He led, kasi nagpatayo, siya yung nagpatayo ng mga idols. You remember yung napag-aralan natin the last time yung inside the temple there are these abominable 
all things that uh, that they worship that leads into uh, uh, jealousy before the Lord. Yung mga talaga mga creeping things that are written all and drawn all over the walls. He has something to do with that, ano? And the Lord is keep on telling him, and yet he does not listen, ano? Um, and then uh, because of that, you know, he he was destroyed. So Ezekiel 12. Dito sa Ezekiel 12, dito sa pag-aaralan natin, it is a very uh, clear warning. Very clear warning for all believers. Um, you know, it's just like the Lord will not wait forever. Kasi ang dami ng time na, na, na sinasabi ng Lord na, you know, I am telling you that, that, that the, the end is near. Tulad dalimbawa sa atin, ano, at sinasabi na, you know, malapit ng pagka, uh, ang, ang katapusan, yung mga ganun, the Lord's second coming, ano, parang ganun, you during that time, ano, um, sinasabi nila, oh, we have heard that before. Di ba narinig na natin yung tungkol dun sa judgment na darating sa atin? It's been how many years already, pero wala pa rin nangyayari. It, it's not happening, ano? Pero dito sa chapter 12, sinasabi niya na tapos na ang paghihintay, tapos na yung grace period. You know, the Lord sometimes is not giving us yung, yung judgment yet. He's not giving us the, the, the final destruction, just like the final destruction for the Jerusalem, because the Lord is giving us grace period. The Lord is giving grace period, a lot of grace period to the people of Judah to repent. But you know, there will be a time There will be the time that God will not wait for our sin forever. Yes, He is a, a merciful God. Yes, He is a long-suffering God. But you know, God hates evil. You know, and He will not allow His sage, yung kanyang mga righteous people, to to live in sin forever. You know, eventually, eventually, yung yung suffering will come. Eventually, yung destruction it will come. Ano? So. At this moment, dito sa chapter 12, we will see na tapos na ang pasensya ng Lord, tapos na yung paghihintay ng Lord, tapos na yung warning ng Lord, and this will be the moment wherein the destruction will take place already. Ayan. So, is the Lord giving us warning already? Sometimes after na nagre-reveal sa ating ng Lord dun sa mga ginagawa nating Uh, hindi kalugod-lugod sa kanya. And the Lord is giving us warning already. Anak, ihinto mo na yan. Anak, huwag na yan yun yung gagawin natin. Anak, kailangan ang, ang, ang focus natin is dun sa the something that glorifies the Lord. But after so many warnings and we don't stop, and then there will be a time that the judgment will come already. Yeah. So, Ezekiel 12, no? and uh, the vision, yung vision ng Lord, tapos na yung vision ng Lord dito. Ang, ang pinapakita naman ng Lord dito is yung, uh, yung word of God is uh, not about the vision, but it's about another portrayal. Ano? So God has spoken to Ezekiel. Let's, let's read this over. No? Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, You are living among the rebellious people. So these are the people of Judah, no? The are uh, uh, rebellious people, you know? You are with them, with these rebellious people. The Lord is telling Ezekiel, Ezekiel, yung yung mga tao na to, you are sharing this to the people, but these are the people who are rebellious. Kahit no matter what you will say, ano man yung iipoportray mo sa kanila, but they will not listen because these are rebellious people and, and we don't want to be in that position to be uh, you know that we are rebelling against the lord verse uh, sabi niya dito they have, they have eyes to see but do not see and ears to hear but they do not hear for they are rebellious people and not another rebellious alam niyo yung word na rebellious people dito Talagang he was mentioned several times just on this chapter alone that he's saying na portraying na talagang yung mga tao na to very uh, rebellious people. So the message of Ezekiel was uh, was um, extended or was addressed to the people who are exiled din dito sa uh, sa Babylon, just like what we have learned before, and um, that they have hardened their heart. And um, they they do believe na 
hindi yung 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 judgment ng Lord hindi darating. Para tulad din bawa ngayon ano. We we don't believe that the judgment of the Lord we we don't because a lot of people believe that you know the the coming judgment of the Lord is is very near already but these people they say mm, tagal na nating naririnig yan hanggang ngayon wala namang nangyayari. So but this is it. This is the time that the that the, the, the that the judgment comes already that there will be a destruction to the people of um of Judah yeah sabi niya dito their eyes sabi niya meron daw silang mga mata pero hindi naman nakakita nakakita meron daw silang mga tenga pero hindi naman nakakarinig for they are rebellious people the sign of you are being a rebellious people the sign that you are found not worthy yung bang found a rebellious man and woman before the lord is that when you have the eyes but you don't see is that when you have the ear that you don't listen what does that mean so rebellious yung ibig sabihin you are seeing the glory of the lord you are seeing the the warning of the lord kasi doon sa people of israel They are already seeing yung yung warning lang Lord that even Ezekiel himself ipinurtray na nga niya visually para madali nang maintindihan and yet they are seeing it with their eyes and yet they don't see yung meron silang mat- mga mata but they don't really see meron silang ear kasi the prophecy the, the, the prophecy was even told to them even in this book of uh, chapter 12 that the Lord uh, made Ezekiel to prophesy against these people, against the rulership. And yet they have ear, but they do not listen. These are the rebellious people that is being mentioned here several times. Ano? Rebellious people, they are not obedient to God. They have uh, this stiff, naked, naked people that they rebelled against the authority of the Lord over them. Ano? And they, they, they hear the message of Ezekiel. But they remain their their eyes closed, you know. Parang lupumasok lang dito sa kabilang tenga, tapos lumabas naman sa kabilang tenga. They actually uh, see uh, the, the captivity. They will see the, the, the destruction that is about to happen, the punishment of the Lord. But they don't really take it seriously, you know, because of them being a rebellious people and rebellious. Re- being uh, rebellious you no know? being rebellious is a great sin before the lord just like you know this is a, a great example that the lord hates people who are rebellious you know it does first uh, first uh, samuel chapter 15 ano first samuel uh, chapter 15 ang sabi doon that the uh, the yung yung rebellion daw is just like a sin of witchcraft Biluin nyo yun. Let me, I, I want to read that one with uh, with you guys. Uh, Samuel chapter 15, uh, verse 23. I may, may see that. Ang sabi niya dito, uh, 23, For rebellion is like a sin of divination. Alam niyo po yung divination? Ito yung parang witchcraft. It's like a sin of witchcraft and arrogance like an evil of idolatry. If you are arrogant before the Lord, if you are arrogant person, para ka na, ling, para ka na ring idolaters. Kasi kapareho lang ng kasalanan ng pagiging idolaters, yung, ano, yung, yung arrogance. At saka yung rebellion, para ka na ring witchcraft. Parang mangkukulam. Siguro naman wala namang mangkukulam sa atin dito. <laughs> Baka naman meron, ano? talagang in Jesus' name talaga. No? Um, alam nyo, ang Lord, binigyan tayo ng tenga. God has given us ear to listen to what? To listen to God's word. Kung minsan kung ano-ano yung mga pinakikinggan natin. Are we listening the voice of the Lord or are we listening the voice of this world? Are we listening something that is godly or are we listening something that is evil? Tandaan natin ang nagbigay sa atin ng tengang pandinig na yan, ang Diyos. And it has to be used for the glory and for the purpose of the Lord. God has created us and given us these eyes to see this majesty, you know? to see the splendor of His majesty. You know? Psalms 96 verse 6, the splendor of the majesty of the Lord has to be the one that we will see, ang sabi niya doon. 
So, ibig sabihin, God has created us these eyes, those beautiful eyes, to see the majesty and the glory and the splendor of the Lord in our lives. You know? But these people of Israel, ang sabi niya, meron silang mata pero hindi sila nakakakita. Hindi na nila nakikita yung message ng Lord. Meron silang pandinig pero hindi naman si Meron silang tenga pero hindi naman nakakarinig. Hindi nila naririnig yung message na ibinibigay sa kanila ng Lord. So tulad natin, ano, kailangan gamitin natin yung ating mga eyes to glorify and see the glory of the Lord. Gamitin natin yung tenga para makinig tayo ng salita ng Diyos, makinig tayo doon sa message ng Lord, makinig tayo doon sa pagtuturo and teaching of our Lord that we should not have this rebellious heart. The sign of having a rebellious heart, you have eyes but you don't see. You have ear but you don't hear. Ano? So dito naman sa Ezekiel chapter Uh, three, ano sabi niya dito? Therefore, son of man, pick your belongings. So ito naman yung symbolic ah, kapagawa ng Lord para magpoportray na naman siya. Mag, maggagawa na naman siya ng tinatawag natin parang cheater act dito. Sabi niya, therefore, son of man, pick your belongings for exile and in the daytime as they watch, set out and go from where you are to another place. So ang sabi niya dito, magpack mo, pack mo yung belongings mo para kunwari eh tatakas ka para kunwari eh mula doon sa sa Jerusalem mae-exile ka eh samantalang naka-exile na siya no naka-exile na siya for sinasabi niya portray that the remains people who are nandoon sa sa Jerusalem ano yung mga nasa Jerusalem ngayon they will pack themselves and they will be exiled also and they will be destroyed And there is just like this is like a prophecy because the Lord told uh, Ezekiel you have to give prophecy to the people of Judah and this is the prophecy. Yung sabi niya ito, ito yung gagawin mo, sabi niya magpack ka ng belongings as if you will be exiled. Sabi niya dito as um uh and you you have to do it on daytime. A daytime where in everybody could see you, all the people of Judah who are exiled in Babylon, they will see you, what you are doing. So they will, it will give a message to them. Hopefully, sabi niya, hopefully it will bring an impact to these people ano, on the things that you will do. Ano. So the significance of this strange action is, uh, is this. Ano, yung, yung preparing of the baggage ano, is it's telling the inhabitants of the people of Israel that they will pack their belongings to captivity that they will be captured that they will be uh, exiled also no so ito yung hindi pa nangyayari to actually you know these people are already exiled no actually this is the second wave of the exile and the prophecy that is saying that there will be a final there will be a final exile na mangyayari which is the third wave and the third wave and we learned that one in the book of second uh, second samuel before ano doon sa pinag-aaralan nating mga bible characters we went through this one that the the people of judah was destroyed and the jerusalem was destroyed even the temple was destroyed it was ruined the walls of jerusalem was knocked down diba tapos after noon diba lumabas si Nehemiah that uh, after 70 years that they want to rebuild the temple they want to rebuild the wall because it was totally destroyed so the prophecy that is being said over here that there will be a destruction on the temple that there will be destruction on the city and the walls of Jerusalem will be knocked down totally ano and and the people will be taken captive to a Babylon and not just the people but also Sedekiah. Sedekiah was the king at that time, diba? He's like actually the prince because Jehoiakim is all, is the king. And uh, Sedekiah also is just like he's the prince, parang ganun. And um and uh sabi niya dito that uh, yung tatakas ito. Tatakas, diba na pag-aralan natin si Sedekiah when 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 they were captured when the city was destroyed ang ginawa ni Sedekaya tumakas siya tumakas siya and nag nagtalokbong pa siya ng ng kumot para hindi niya mak- yung, yung shame niya it will be covered but while he was ex- uh, while he was trying to escape anong sabi doon 
nahuli siya ni Nebuchadnezzar. Nahuli siya ng mga tauhan ni Nebuchadnezzar. So he was drugged. Tinali siya, dinrug siya, papunta doon sa Babylon. Hindi lang siya, pati yung kanyang mga anak dinrug. And when they were in Babylon, in front of many people, they put him to shame. And also, you know, yung ibang mga Bible scholar, it was said that this King Sedekiah, no, when he was drugged, he was drugged totally naked. That it shows that, you know, this is the king that you are look after, but he's stripped naked and then he was put into shame. And then on that time, he was put on public and then his son right in front of him. And then they killed the son right in front of him. And then after that, they made him blind. They blinded him. Ganun kalunos-lunos yung nangyari dito sa, dito, dito sa king na to. Ano? So uh, dito naman sa verse 4, ang sabi niya dito, During the day- daytime which they watch. So during the daytime, w- w- while the, these people are watching and seeing you, you are portraying, you will portray this uh, symbolic act. Number one symbolic act is magdadala ka ng mga gamit mo na parang ma-exile ka. Kukunin mo yung mga belongings mo na importante kasi lilipat ka doon sa ibang lugar. Ano Parang sinasabi ng mga, ng mga people dito, eh, si Kel, hindi ko naiintindihan bakit ginagawa mo yan. Parang, ano, sa ka pupunta, magbabakasyon ka ba? Ah, parang ganun. Eh, hindi mo ba alam na talagang refugee na tayo dito? Hindi tayo makakaalis dito. Bihag tayo dito. We are in the encampment dito. So, pero ang ginagawa mo, parang mag, mag, nag-iimpake ka, parang aalis ka. Parang, paano ka makakaalis dito? Hindi ka makakaalis dito dahil bihag nga tayo. No? But, but that is the thing that he is portraying. The Lord made him do this para to catch the attention of the people. Gawin mo to pa, they might catch the attention of the people. In which, he was able to catch the attention of the people kasi nagtanong sila eh. Magtatanong sila dito, nagtanong sila na anong ginagawa mo? Nasisiraan ka na ba ng ulo? Paano ka makakaalis dito? No? But they don't know the message. Kung minsan alam nyo, the Lord is could uh, give relay message. The Lord could give message to every individual in many different ways ano sometimes the lord give message through preaching through message ano kapag halimbawa may nagpe-preach sa atin ng message ano and uh, the lord could reveal to us ano the lord could impress something in our heart out of the message sometimes it's not through message that the lord could relay uh, whatever he wants to tell us sometimes kung minsan magkakaroon tayo ng mga situation sa buhay natin ano kung minsan magkakaroon tayo ng Uh, may, may sickness in the family or us ourselves. And from there, we will realize that the Lord is relaying a message to us. Sometimes magkakaroon tayo ng mga difficult situation, mga storms in life, but the Lord is relaying actually a message to us. Tulad halimbawa dito, the Lord actually made them exile to, to Babylon. So yung message pa lang na yun, may message na gustong i- papahatid si, uh, si Lord dito. Meron siyang gustong ipahatid dun sa people of Israel while they were exiled to Babylon. Kasi sinasabi dito, yes, it is the Babylon ang, ang nag-conquer sa inyo. Yes, it is King Nebuchadnezzar who made you captured. But actually, I was the one behind it. Because I have a message for all of you, people of Judah, who are rebellious against me. Who have turned away your eyes and your worship from me. You know, sometimes may mga sitwasyon tayo sa buhay natin na nangyayari at nagaganap pero God has a purpose. God has a message for all of us. God could relay His message in many different ways. Ano, not just through preaching but also sometimes in, 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 in life situation natin sa buhay natin. And God could reveal His message for us. Ano? At sabi niya dito, so magpapaka ng belongings mo and pagkatapos, ito yung gagawin mo. Sabi niya dito, verse 4, During the daytime, while they watch, bring out your belongings pack for exile. So magpapak mo, dadalhin mo yung mga belongings mo, ipapak mo eh, pa, para ready ka na for exile. Exile na nga sila dito, but he's talking about the things that is about to come. The total destruction, ano, the total exile. Uh, sabi niya dito, which bring us belonging pack for exile. Then in the evening, while they are watching, sa evening naman, habang nagwa-watch pa rin sila, 
So, yung, yung mga symbolic act na pinagawa ng Lord Ezekiel, hindi niya ginagawa ito in, in, in private na siya lang nakakita. Hindi. He is doing all these things in public where everybody could see what he's doing and but he's not telling them what is he doing. Hindi niya sinasabi sa kanila kung ano yung kanyang ginagawa. That's why these people are so mind-boggled. Ano kaya ang ginagawa ng tao nito? But later on, later on, Ezekiel will speak because the Lord wants him to speak to the people and pronounce a uh, judgment and pronounce a uh, prophecy against the people and prophecy against uh, uh, King Zedekiah. So, uh, makikita natin dito that uh, Ezekiel does not speak when the Lord told him not to speak. He just speak when the Lord tells him to speak. Ganun ang mga prophecy. Ganun ang mga messenger ng Lord. Ganun yung mga taga, tagahatid ng message ng Lord. That they don't speak out of their own mind. They don't speak out of their own understanding and intelligence. But they speak when the Lord wants them to speak. So it's a very clear, clear indication for us that once we speak, we just speak what the Lord wants us to say. We just speak the pure word of God and not just on our own, just to boost ourselves and just to, to bring out our own intellect. But makikita natin that Ezekiel remains silent when the Lord told him to be silent. And the Lord tells him to prophesy and to speak forth to the people when the Lord told him to speak to the people. Same true and I, you know? Kapag tayo mag-share tayo ng word of God, mag-share tayo, you know, we have to wait for the Lord's command. Hindi lang tayo. Kaya that's why, you know, in everything that we do, acknowledge Him and He shall direct our path. That we pray everything that we do. Lord, give me the right words. Lord, give me uh, uh, the right revelation in order for your words to be shared with all clarity. Ngayon, ang sabi naman niya dito sa verse 5, so while you are doing this one, you're packing your belongings and and while everybody is seeing it, ano, So people are like, ano bang ginagawa ito ni si Ezekiel? Ano? Hindi lang yun. Ito pa ang sinabi niya. Verse 5, While they watch, dig through the wall and take your belongings out through it. So ibig sabihin, doon sa bahay mo, ganito gawin mo while everybody, alam niyo yung mga bahay kasi nila noon that time, para lang silang mga ano, yung mga clay, para silang mga bricks na tumiga, yung clay na tumigas. Ganun ang mga bahay noon. Sabi nga doon sa ibang ano, ha, he dig through his hands. Na pwede mo pala kalokuhawin yung with your hands. Ano? Talagang binaklas niya yung wall. And then doon sa wall na yon ipinasok, inilabas niya doon yung, ano, yung kanyang daladalag bagahe. Yung, yung pinak niyang bagay niya. I, 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 inilusot niya doon sa wall na binutas niya. Tsaka siya, sumiksik doon. Yung saktong butas lang, nakakasya lang yung gamit niya at saka yung kakasya siya para maka, makalabas siya. Ibig sabihin, it is a portrayal of the King Sedekaya. At makikita natin yung sa Second King. Ano? That, that's what King Sedekaya did. No? Nagbaklas siya ng, 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 ng butas doon sa wall para lang siya makatakas. Yun ang gagawin niya. So, he is portraying that Sedekaya will will do that and try to escape tapos magtakip ka pa sabi niya magtakip ka ng ano mag magtalumbong ka sabi niya the the you cover your 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 face your head that then you don't see the shame that you are doing ano and then pero we know and after that that he was captured we know that after that si Sedekaya he was uh, totally destroyed din dito ano and and, and um Katakot-takot yung nangyari sa kanya. Na? And then, sabi niya gano'n. And eventually, eventually, it catch the attention of the people. Nakatch nila yung attention, nakatch ni Ezekiel yung attention ng mga tao doon sa pinagawa ng Lord sa kanya na to, na symbolic act. Kasi sabi niya dito sa, sa verse, um, 
I would say verse 8, ang sabi niya dito. Okay. Verse 7 muna. So I did as I was commanded. So Ezekiel did. Ginawa ni Ezekiel kung ano yung kinumand sa kanya ng Lord. Kung ano yung pinagawa sa kanya ng Lord. During the day, I brought out my things packed for exile. Then in the evening, I dug through the wall with my hands. I took my belongings out at dusk, carrying them on my shoulder while they watch, while the people watch. Ano? Sabi niya dito, in the morning, the word of the Lord came to me. So in the morning, pagkatapos nitong lahat ng ginawa niya, dumating ang Lord, ang word the Lord came to me, sabi niya. Son of man, did you not Uh, did not the rebellious house of Israel ask you, what are you doing? So tinanong ng mga people of Israel, anong ginagawa mo? So eventually, by them asking Ezekiel, ah, Ezekiel, anong ginagawa mo? That means he was able to catch the attention of these people. Ano? Hindi naman siguro magtatanong silang ganun kung hindi nila na-catch na, na yung attention itong si uh, Ezekiel dun sa kanyang mga ginaw, ginawa. Ano? But eventually, so they have Uh, see, nakatch yung attention nila, but did they listen? Sometimes, you know, nakakatch yung attention natin. Oh, ang ganda ng message. Uy, naintindihan ko yung message. Yes, I got, you got my attention. But the thing is, did the people of Israel repented? Did the people of the Israel, uh, these people of Judah, did they turn away from their wicked ways? And they turned to God and they believed in the Lord. Eventually not. They did not. That's why the Lord's wrath, the Lord's judgment, the Lord's just chastisement happened to the people of Judah, no? So, and because of that destruction happened to these people of uh, of the Lord. So, what's the message? What is the message that the Lord wants to bring to us this evening? In line with this um with this uh situation, in line with this uh Uh, verses that we have uh, in this particular chapter in chapter 12. Ano? Uh, that ano yung mga malilearn natin lesson from this bad things that is happening to the people of Israel. Probably number one, I have listed four things that we'll learn over here. Number one is seek to understand what God wants you to learn. May mga situation na nangyayari sa buhay natin, ano? May mga distraction tulad halimbawa dito sa people of Israel. They are the people that the Lord have chosen. They are the center of of his attention. And yet, this distraction things happen to them. So, by that by happening that nangyari yung mga situation na yon dapat they have learned already what God wants them to learn so kung halimbawa meron tayong mga situation na nangyayari sa buhay natin ano merong mga bagay na na things that you don't understand why things are happening you know actually these people of Israel they don't they are not trying to understand bakit nangyayari sa kanila they have this um mentality na uh, parang pinabayaan sila ng Lord. Hindi nila kasalanan yung nangyari sa kanila, kundi ang Lord ang nagpabaya. ba diba, Lord, kami, anak mo kami, pero bakit ganito? Ba't kami ay na-conquer? Na, na bakit kami na-exile? ba diba, dapat po protectionan nyo kami. So meron silang ganitong mentality, meron silang victim mentality. Alam niyo ang hirap pag meron tayong victim mentality, kasi pag meron tayong victim mentality, hindi natin ibinibigay yung sisi sa atin, kundi ibinibigay natin yung laging sisi sa ibang tao. For everything that negative things na nangyayari sa buhay natin, hindi natin kasalanan. Always kasalanan ng ibang tao. Always tayo lang ang victim. Ha? We are always victim. Meron tayong victim mentality. And sometimes, you know, the Lord wants to correct us from that. Pag meron tayong victim mentality, probably sometimes, you know, we will go through and we will give a study on uh, ano yung consequences, ano yung dinadala sa atin ng having a victim mentality. Ano? So, in situation, you know, learning natin dito, ang lesson na makukuha natin dito, number one, is we have to seek to understand what God wants us to learn. Ano ba yung gustong ma-learn ng Lord? Ano ba yung will of God? Lord, ano ba yung will mo dito? Lord, ano ba yung purpose mo? Bakit nangyayari yung mga ganitong bagay? Lord, what are the things that I should learn? 
from this. You know, sometimes we are focusing on blaming other people with the things that is happening in our life. But instead, but the Lord want, doesn't want us to think that way, but the Lord instead wants us to find out and verify with ourselves, Lord, ano ba yung malilearn ko dito? Lord, ano ba yung message mo na gusto mong matutunan ko dito? Ano? What character, anong characteristics meron ba dapat isushow ko? Sometimes it is about us that the Lord wants to give us this renewal of mind, just like what it says in Romans chapter 12. The, the Lord wants us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind so that we will learn and we will test what is perfect and the right will of the Lord in our lives. Ano? Uh, sabi niya dito, doon sa Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verse 10, sabi niya dito, uh, God disciplines us for our good, you know? Dinidisiplina daw tayo ng Lord dahil para sa ating ikabubuti. For our own good. That's the reason why that the Lord uh, disciplines us, ano? So kung halimbawa tayo ay dumadanas ng pagdisiplina mula sa Lord, ano? Let, let me read that one. Hebrews chapter 12. Let me see. Hebrews chapter 12, verse... Uh, 10. Hebrews chapter 12 verse let me see, 10. Okay, sabi niya dito, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 10, our father disciplined us for a little while as they true best, but God disciplined us for our good. So the Lord will discipline us, sabi niya dito, for a short while, for a short, short period of time. But when the Lord discipline us, sabi niya, it is for our own good. Sa so ikabubuti natin, ikabubuti natin kung, kung bakit the Lord is disciplining us. Just like the people of Israel, the people of Judah, the Lord have chosen, ano? the Lord uh, have uh, loved so much. But you know, this time, that the Lord is giving judgment, the Lord is giving punishment, the Lord is giving discipline to these people of Judah. And, and it's for their good. You know, there are times in our life, the Lord is giving us a discipline. Meron bang disiplina na ibinibigay ang Lord sa atin? Ano? Pag meron siya binibigay na disiplina, always see to it na ang, ang gusto ng Lord sa atin is to, for us to listen in order for us to be good, to do good, ano? Kasi yung judgment ng Lord sa atin is for our own good, ano? So that's, that's number one is uh, kapag dumadanas tayo ng mga ganitong difficult situation, we have to seek to understand what is the things that we will learn from the situation that we are facing. Number two, obey God even when you don't understand why. Mag-obey lang tayo sa Lord kahit hindi natin naiintindihan. Tulad halimbawa kay Ezekiel. Si Ezekiel sinabi ng Lord, ganito ang gawin mo Ezekiel ha. Uh, magpak ka ng gamit mo. Parang sabi ni Ezekiel, Lord, pa paano ako ma parang mag mag, mag ano ka na parang ma-exile ako. Eh, nasa exile na nga ako. Lord, sabi mo magbubutas ako dun sa bahay ko, dun sa wall. At tapos parang tatakas ako dun sa mismong bahay ko. Ganun ba yon? Parang, I don't understand, Lord, yung pinapagawa mo sa akin. But in yet, ang makikita natin dito, that Ezekiel, Ezekiel did, sabi niya, I did whatever God wants me to do. Ano? Sabi niya dito, verse 7, So I did as I was commanded. During the day, I brought out my things packed for exile. Then in the evening, I dug through the wall with my hands. I took my belongings out of the dust, carrying them out of my shoulder while they are watching. Ayan. So, ibig sabihin ko, ano yung commandment ng Lord? Nung anong pinagawa ng Lord sa kanya? He did it. Even without him understanding kung bakit the Lord wants him to do yung mga bagay na yun. So, we have to obey God even we don't understand. Kahit hindi natin naiintindihan yung purpose ng Lord. Because why? God knows what is best. And God cares for all of us. And whatever God is commanding us to do, it is for our own good. 
and it is for a greater purpose. God has a greater purpose for all of us. Ano? So, kahit na hindi natin naiintindihan yung will ng Lord, let us obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Ano? Third thing that we have to learn from this uh, uh, chapter ano, is be humble and honest about our sin. Kailangan tayo ay tumatanggap ng ating mga kasalanan, yung ating pagkukulang. Uh, sabi niya dito, uh, sabi dito, verse 16, But I will spare a few of them from the sword, famine, and plague, plague, so that in the nations where they go, they might acknowledge all their detestable practices. Then they will know that I am the Lord. So, the Lord purpose, kaya pinupurpose ng Lord na mangyayari yung mga bagay na ito, sabi niya dito, in order for them to acknowledge the detestable things that they have done. So, kailangan i-acknowledge natin yung ating pagkukulang, acknowledge natin yung ating uh, 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 mistake, yung ating sin, and sabi niya dito, and then that they will know that I am the Lord. Kasi the Lord wants us to go back with Him. The Lord wants to proclaim and declare to us that He is the Lord. Kapag nangyayari yung mga situation of, sa, sa buhay natin, ano, we have to be humble. We have to humble down ourselves and be honest to God that, Lord, I have sinned against you. Lord, I have made mistake. You know, I have hardened my heart throughout this time, throughout this year. But Lord, I want to go back to you. Yun ang gusto ng Lord, but the people of Israel talagang napaka-hardened ng heart nila that they did not come before the Lord and yet they have hardened their heart kaya yung judgment dumating sa kanila. So this is a clear indication and a clear example for all of us on what we should not do. Instead, we should do the opposite of what they did in order for us to receive the greater glory and purpose of the Lord in our life. And lastly, last message that uh, probably the Lord wants to give to us, number four, is don't put off your response. Don't delay your response to God. You don't have to procrastinate. Huwag tayong mag-procrastinate doon sa coming back natin sa Lord. We have to do it right away. Huwag na tayong maghintay pa ng bukas o sa makalawa or sometimes yung habang pinoprolong mo, lalong na harden yung heart mo. Just like the Pharaoh, right? Pharaoh of Egypt. The longer that he is uh, beholding the, the people of Israel to be released from captivity into uh, Egypt, the more that the heart of Pharaoh is being hardened. At dahil doon, ang daming plagues na dumating sa kanya. So same true with us. Ano? If we hear the voice of the Lord, let us not harden our heart. That we should... We should not put off our response to God. That we should not delay. That we should not procrastinate. Ano? We should not hold it. Ano? Now na. That we have to do it right away. Ano? Kasi sabi niya dito, ano? the, uh, uh, verse 26, The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, and the house of Israel is saying, The vision he sees is for many years from now and the prophecies about the distant future. Therefore, say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord, none of my swords will be delayed no longer. Sabi niya, whatever I say will be fulfilled, declare the Sovereign Lord. Kasi dum dumating na yung time na hindi na naghintay pa ang Lord. Tapos na yung paghihintay ng Lord. Tapos na yung grace period na ibinigay sa kanila ni Lord. For how many years, for how many prophets that have spoken to you already and yet you have hardened your heart and you did not turn away from your wicked ways. And because of that, sabi niya right now na, I cannot spare you no longer. Judgment is about to come. So when uh, pag dumadating yung sa atin yung pagtuturo ng Lord, let us not procrastinate anymore. Baka dumating yung time that the judgment on us is already right before us. And because of that, we don't want to be destroyed, just like the people of Israel. Let us close our eyes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, at this moment, O oh Lord, your message to us is so clear, O oh Lord, that you want to impart to us, O oh God, this 
example, O God, that the people of Israel, their stubbornness, O Lord, they're, they're uh, having this heart, O God, that is hardened. They have the eyes, but they don't see. They have the ears, but they don't hear, O Lord. Lord, we pray that we will not be like this, O God, but instead we will be doing the opposite. That our eyes will see your glory, will see your splendor of your majesty, O God. And our ears, O God, will always open and will always be susceptible, O God, to listen to your words, to listen to your message, O God, to listen to your revelation to us, O Lord, that we should not harden our hearts before you. But instead, O God, we have this a receptive heart, O oh God. And we learn from this message, O oh God, from this evening of, 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 of worship, O oh Lord, that we have to seek your will, your purpose, O oh God, that we want to see what we will learn, O oh God, from every situation in our life. There are some situations that is happening in our life, O oh God, that we should always be reminded, O oh Lord. Lord, you have a message for this. There is something that we should learn from this situation. There is something that we should learn, oh God, from this uh, event in our life. And we should always ask this question, Lord, what are we going to learn? What is the thing that you are teaching us, oh Lord, in these things? And Lord, help us, oh God, to obey, even we don't understand. Just like Jeremiah, uh, just like Ezekiel, oh Lord, that he have done, the very symbolic act that you have asked him to do, even though he doesn't understand. There are things, oh God, in our life that we don't understand why. But you have to give us, Lord, we pray, that give us this heart, an obedient heart, that we will obey you even though we don't understand the things that is happening within us, oh God. And Lord, help us to be humble. Help us to be honest, oh God, to acknowledge our sin our mistake, our shortcoming, O oh God, our, our disobedience to you, O oh Lord. Give us this humility. Give us this humbleness, O oh God. Give us this honesty, O oh Lord, to accept your purpose that we have fall short in your glory and give us the, the honesty, O oh God, to ask forgiveness for all of our sins, O oh Lord. And Lord, help us also not to delay our response, O oh Lord, that we will always be uh, doing your purpose right after we receive your words, O oh God. It's like what you said in your words, O oh God, if you hear the voice of the Lord, harden not your heart. Lord, help us, O oh God, not to harden our hearts, O oh God. And yet, our hearts will be open to be renewed, to be changed. It's like what it says in the book of Romans chapter 12, that we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And so we see the glory of God that you want to reveal to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Have a blessed, blessed evening, everyone. And I do pray that your week will be um, fabulous and we... I pray that the word of the Lord became a blessing to all of you. So God bless everyone. Have a blessed evening. God bless.